order to avoid family problems, we must be fair with our children, boys and girls. We must be fair. We must empower them with good words. Do you know if you keep telling your child negative words, they begin to believe those negative words. In fact, it, ha- it happens with everyone. If someone keeps telling you you're stupid, you're a failure, you're thick, you're ugly, you're fat, you, you begin at some point to believe these things. Be careful. Don't ruin the minds of people, especially your children. And even the children of others, you're a school teacher or you're a parent or whoever you may be, say good words. Don't say you're a bat and you're a this. Those are dangerous terminologies that are written against your name, payable in this world as well as in the hereafter. Repent from those. Say good words. You're lovely. You're beautiful. You can do it. You will be able to do it. Subhanallah. Those are empowering words. They begin to believe, I can do it, I will do it, I'm beautiful, I'm this. The confidence levels are developed. They will be able to resolve not just family problems, but problems of the ummah, the community and the nation and the globe. Because you as a parent or an adult, empowered them to believe in themselves by the help of Allah. And that's why I look at the Prophet ﷺ. He used to address the children with respect, honor them, give them the the empowering words that helped make them beautiful sahaba over time. They became companions of note. The little ones at that time, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhumah, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, those were little children. And you know what? They were empowered because of the way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu spoke to them. No one on earth will have what they want. Everyone has a unique set of examination questions set by none other than Allah who made you and I. You will not have two days the same. Days will come with challenges. Imagine people fought the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, by preparing armies to go and fight him. What did he say? With the help of Allah, we will not fail. People planned to kill him so many times. What did he do? There were days when he had very little in terms of material wealth, yet Allah could have given him everything. What did he say? What did his family say? They were patient. They looked at what Allah said and the way Allah has chosen to solve this particular, pl- this particular problem. And that is the answer. That is the answer. So you don't have an answer from your pocket or mine. Sometimes we have a challenge and we think we want to solve it our own way. No, it came in your direction. What does Allah say about this? What does the messenger say about it? That's what makes you a Muslim and a mu'min. If you do not want what Allah and his messenger have said in terms of solution to your issues, your matters, your problems, then you can expect nothing but failure and regret because Allah is your Lord and mine. We say we are believers, but wallahi, we have a lot to look into in order to confirm, are we true or are we just paying lip service? That is why Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We have tested all those before you as well in order to distinguish who is truthful and who who are lying. Lying in what? In their claim to believe in Allah. Sometimes you see a crucial deal. You want to dive into it. It looks beautiful. Two years down the line, the same guy crooked you and robbed you of 10 times more than you ever put in. Sometimes Allah wants to block you from the very beginning. So he starts showing you signs to say, you know what? Don't even get involved. It sounds too good to be true. Remain with your millions. Don't go into the billions. I'm talking of Zim dollars, RTGS, by the way. Because if you go into the billions, you know what? You might lose a lot of other things that you have. Subhanallah. What don't you have? Look at it. Someone might complain, well, I don't have this. I don't have that. There are others who would die to be in your situation. They would love to be living your life and you are complaining. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. The whole aim of today's talk was to remind you and I that tests come from Allah. You can manage, but only with the help of Allah. On your own, you cannot do it. If you remove Allah from the equation and you don't want to pray and you don't want to bear patience, you won't succeed.
How you address the child is definitely a test. You swear your child you will pay a price. In the eyes of Allah, you must empower the child with loving words, encouraging words. Did you know that when you tell your child you are stupid, you are ugly, you are a failure, you keep on repeating that they begin to believe that. And the opposite is true when you tell them you're beautiful, you're successful, you can do it, you're amazing, and I love you so much, they begin to believe that. And they are empowered and more confident. Check it out. You can see it. So my brothers, my sisters, something amazing is that a child is more like an empty vessel at the beginning and you fill that vessel with a lot of things. Let them be good things. The way you speak, the way you interact, the way you care for the child, all has an impact in building the family unit to begin with. You didn't have time for your child. You never were there for the child, listening to the issues, the problems, communicating, developing a friendship as well as a relationship with your own children. You would never be able to uh, guarantee their beautiful upbringing. You need to make good decisions regarding these children, but still, When you've made brilliant decisions, you've brought them up, you've spoken, you've been very fair. You know, in the case of divorce and in the case of where someone has passed away, a lot of the times there is a battle. There is push and shove. People want to take the kids and prove a point without looking at what is best for the children. They want to be arrogant by trying to prove a point to the other spouse that I'm going to fix you. Perhaps you're not going to see these kids. Wallahi, those kids grow up with the parental deficit that plays out later on in their lives in different ways. Don't do that. It's your test. You destroy the fabric of the family unit completely in a very bad way because divorce is permissible, but the games that we play thereafter are haram. May Allah help us. We should not play games with the lives of the children, not at all. And vice versa, whatever the rights are, we fulfill in the most beautiful way. We should help and encourage the child to visit that child's other parent. You don't need to say nasty things. When you have a problem in the family and you've broken up completely and you've divorced totally, you don't need to involve your children in it in a way that you start telling them about negative things about their own parent. How do you think they will grow up? No matter what happened, say a few positive things. Encourage them to have a relationship unless they were total abusers. And unless it is really and truly feared that these children will suffer a consequence of developing a relationship with that person because of the criminal behavior of the person, then it's an exception.